Hi, I'm Naomi Dake, one of the psychology practitioners at the Optimum Health Clinic. And I'm Nick Cook, also one of the psychology practitioners at the Optimum Health Clinic. So Naomi, what are we talking about today? So, good question. We're going to talk about the role that psychology can play in recovering from fatigue-related conditions. So, I guess my first question is, does working with psychology imply that my illness is in my head? Definitely not. No, and this is a question we've had, but it's very, very important, I think, to acknowledge that there's a very physical impact of stress on the body, even down to, bizarrely, our tissues and the cells in our body. The stress can really get embedded in our nervous system and all of the systems within our body. So we know that there's a crucial role to play for both the mind and the body in healing from, from that fatigue and the impact associated or the symptoms that go with it. We know that we heal from the body, but the mind plays a really important part in enabling that person to look at the way that they might be living their life, their, their thought patterns, their beliefs, their emotions. And so both of them are inextricably linked. And we don't really want to work with one without the other. It's definitely a team effort. So just talking about stress, Nick, how would I know that I'm stressed? That's one of the big problems that often you simply, you don't it becomes our default. So one of the key things that we work on is building an awareness of the energy costly psychologies and the thought patterns associated with them. And what's causing this stress? So we know that there's multiple factors that can cause stress in our systems. And, and the, this often goes back right back to childhood. Often experiences throughout our lives have contributed and led to this point at which our bodies become overwhelmed and our system simply overloaded by the amount of stress that it's trying to cope with. And what we call that response in the body is maladaptive stress response, really where the body's become stuck at an acute chronic level of stress. And that's often become normalized. So sometimes, as you say, we might not even recognize that that stress is there. So Nick, how do we go about tackling that? We work on a number of different levels. So we work cognitively, so working with thought. We work with the mind-body link, because um, that's really important, and the body and mind link, almost more importantly, because often that link's broken down. We work on an emotional level. So we build an awareness of how we might be avoiding feeling stuff. And then we create a healthy relationship with our emotions, our feelings, and our symptoms. And then there's a coaching component as well. So we're looking at pacing. When and how should we be doing things in relation to the stage of our recovery? And also the tools that are gonna have the most impact at a particular stage in our recovery. And is it all about the work that you will do with your practitioner in the sessions or on the group calls? No, I mean, obviously that's a really important role in the whole process of recovery. Um, and there's so much that really adds value there, whether it's an individual programme or a group programme. There's a lot of interaction and getting to know the person throughout our clinic team, the wider team, to help someone understand whether they'd be more suited to the individual or the group programme. So that's really important. But no, what I would say is, and I think hopefully our team would, uh, would agree with this, that there's a huge amount of value, the real work happens in between the sessions and the calls. It's what the person does with that information, those resources, those tools. And our job and our passion is really about equipping people to be able to, to do that for themselves, not just to recover, but to stay well sustainably. Yeah. And is that big piece, isn't there, about not reading and researching your way to recovery, but actually feeling and doing? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we do say that often, that it's not an intellectual uh, a way to recover, actually, it's very much an experiential. We have to be in the body, experiencing it, processing, in order to be able to, to get the real value from recovery. So in terms of, you know, if somebody's really anxious about going back into their past, Nick, what would you say to that? If there are, if there is past trauma there, it may be important to work with that as part of recovery. But our first priority is gonna be working in the present working with that maladaptive stress response, lifting that and seeing where that takes us. That may take somebody to recovered. 
it may take them to 80% of the way there. There may be some work they need to do in the past. But therapy is a bit like driving a car. It's useful to know roughly where you're going to finish up. It's useful to occasionally look in that rearview mirror and see what's gone on in the past. But the most important bit of road is the road you're just about to come to. So really focusing on working in the present, working in the moment, working in the now. Yeah, it's such, a, such an important one, isn't it? To try and be as present focused and grounded as possible. Not always easy, but um, yeah, yeah, that's part of the work, isn't <laughs> <Yeah>. it? Yes, <laughs> definitely part of the work. Yeah, so true. So I really hope that you've found that helpful today. For more information, go to the clinic website, theoptimumhealthclinic.com.